Okay, today it's going to be the Cambridge kids, William and Kate's three kids. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It just makes a huge difference. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So as a rule, I don't do deep dives into kids. I mean, they're kids. Uh, but uh, someone asked for this. This is Journeys into the Light. Thank you, Journeys, for asking the question. She wanted to know about the Cambridge kids. So I just, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to add uh, uh, blankly about the Cambridge kids, probably six cards on each one, and we'll see what it says. But you know I wicked them. So here's what I've got. Very short, just a little paragraph on each of the three children. And here we go. So in 2013, Prince George Alexander Lewis of Cambridge was born on July 22nd. So he's a cancer. And he's the third in line to the British throne. And he will one day become British monarch, unless something horrible happens before then. And his birth was celebrated across, across the Commonwealth realms. Uh, George's birth boosted the British national economy, provided focus for national pride, and commemorative coins were issued by the Royal Mint and the Royal Canadian Mint. It's the first time a royal birth had been marked that way. And it's the second time that three generations in direct line of succession to the throne have been alive at the same time. The last time that happened was between 1894 and 1901, and that was in the final seven years of Queen Victoria's reign. Now, 2016, his formal education began at the age of two at Westacre Montessori School Nursery near his family home uh, in Amher Hall in Norfolk. And in 2017, he attended his first day of primary school at the Thomas's School for Battersea under the name of George Cambridge. Now let's talk about Charlotte. 2015, Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana, beautiful, of Cambridge, was born uh, May 2nd. So she's a Taurus and uh, the second child and the only daughter of Prince William and Catherine. She's fourth in line to the throne and landmarks illuminated pink to mark her birth, including the Tower Bridge, the London Eye, and Trafalgar Square Fountains. And there were gun salutes at Hyde Park and the Tower of London. She is affectionately called, and I didn't know this, Lottie and Mignonette by her parents. And in 2018, Charlotte started education at the Wilcox Nursery School near her family's home in Kensington Palace. 2019, she joined Prince George at Thomas' School in Battersea, where she is known as Charlotte Cambridge. Now let's talk about Louis. So in 2018, Prince Louis Arthur Charles of Cambridge was born on April 23rd, so he also is a Taurus, and the third child and second son of Prince William and Catherine. He's the fifth in line to the throne. Uh, gun salutes from the Tower of London and Hyde Park and bell ringing at West Westminster Abbey marked his birth. And his first and last names honor his paternal great-great-great-uncle, Louis Mountbatten, and his grandfather, Prince Charles, of course. He wore the replica of the royal uh, christening gown that was created in 2008 as a copy to replace the original that was uh, put away for preservation. Um, uh, and that was an 1841 gown made for Queen Victoria's eldest daughter, Victoria, Princess Royal, and used for every royal christening uh, ever since, either that gown or the replica that they created. Now, in 2021, Louis started his education at Wilcox Nursery School near his family's home in Kensington Palace, and we presume he's known at school as Louis Cambridge. So let's see what the cards tell us about these three kids. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's a, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow Joe Lee uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very in interesting person, and uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him, um, but he was a circus performer. He went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well at the Clown College here. 
uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a, a degree in that. And then uh, he's done other things in his life. And then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards, he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful. They're easy to use. Um, the art on them is amazing. And if you know your right away system, you're not going to have a problem, you know, deciphering uh, what these cards are, are going to mean. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory and fun, fun, fun to look at. So, you know, I do this so that you can have a look at these cards. Uh, and, you know, if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards, otherwise you're only going to see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time. And uh, I think it's just you're missing out on a lot. So, you know, this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot, I love using these. Okay, so this is the Cambridge Kids. The Cambridge Kids. I hadn't thought of them as George, Charlotte, and Louis Cambridge. Isn't that interesting? But that's who they are. So we're going to consider the Cambridge Kids. I think we're going to do um, three questions, one for each of them. Uh, that will be just three card pulls. And I'm not sure yet, I haven't formed in my mind what the question might be for the last, but uh, before we do any of that, let's take just a moment for meditation. Okay. The Cambridge Kids. So let's think about this. So first, we'll start right at the top with George. And so I want these cards to consider George. Specifically, let's think about George. Okay, Prince George. Um, let's just say, my goodness, I don't know what the question can be. I should have thought about this better. Uh, let's just see what the cards can tell us about George. You know what? I'll do six cards. I'm sure we'll. Six cards. What can the cards tell us about George? One, two, three, four, five, and six. What can the cards tell us about Prince George? Okay. Prince George. And of course, under it all is we're wondering if he'll be king. What can the cards tell us about Prince George? Okay, so the uh, signifier card for uh, this question uh, about what can the cards reveal about uh, Prince George is the Fool card. And, you know, it's not literally the Fool. This is a new journey. This is starting out on something new. And in this uh, playful deck, we've got a little clown who's balancing on the nose of the beast. And let's face it, if you're uh, in line for the throne, uh, the monarchy can be a beast, and he's just a child right now, and I don't think it's in his mind whatsoever. And so I don't think he has... Uh, of course, any real uh, substantial, um, you know, knowledge or feeling or understanding of what all of that means. And that's what this card signifies for me. He's just beginning his journey. The challenge to that then is this Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is being, um, you know, trapped. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. And he is surrounded by all of that. But what we do know about this act is that these swords aren't ever really being thrown at the subject. They pop out of the back of the, of the, of the, um, the target, uh, but they nevertheless do still surround the subject. So I think he's not in danger, but he is surrounded by all those rules, all that truth, justice rules, and all that law. Uh, the base of this reading for George, just seeing what the cards will tell us, with this Ten of Swords, is that this is the end of something. Ten of Swords is typically depicted by ten swords in someone's back in the typical Rider weight. In this deck, we've got ten swords that are been then shoved into this basket. Typically, this is the, uh, the trick uh, that a magician has where there's someone in the basket and they shove ten swords in. So this is interesting. This is the base of the reading. It can mean to me that, you know, his journey doesn't start in a regal way until someone else's journey has come to an end, namely his dad, if his father is in fact uh, on the throne or whomever. People have to s stop. Their cycle has to end before his cycle will begin <coughs> as a monarch. And the past of this reading is the hangman. Well, it's a waiting game. Yeah, it's always, uh, you know, looking at things from another perspective and, and having the patience to wait. In the sky of this reading, with the four of um, 
wands, you know, these wands are uh, action, uh, forward movement uh, plans, and these four wands are holding this tent up. I always say the four wands is like small celebrations. And in fact, you can see these two um, uh, elephants inside the tent do seem to be having a little celebration with this little bouquet of flowers here. So the, uh, the future plans are what's holding up this tent, and that seems perfectly appropriate for George. And uh, then just for what the cards can tell us about him, with this page of wands, uh, the page is the very least uh, effective of the court cards. And as far as the monarchs go, or the potential monarchs go, right now he is uh, at the strength of about a page. And wands being the plans, he's holding his hand for the future. And he's just riding that beast, which is the monarchy. And uh, so, yeah, so I think uh, there's not much to say about George right now, uh, karm karmically. Uh, just to go over again, he's beginning his journey. He's surrounded by all the rules and the, the law and the truth and justice that goes uh, with his future potential position. Somebody else's uh, journey has to end before his begins. Looking at things from another uh, angle or, or having to wait until you can see things clearly or get yourself loose is certainly where he is. Uh, my tablet's wanting to go off with my questions right there. Um, and then the um, four of wands being the uh, small celebrations that hold the tent, tent up while he's waiting for something to happen. And then with the final outcome, he's just the page of wands uh, riding uh, that uh, beast until the appropriate time happens. So, yeah, there's nothing to say here about George, as in fact, there shouldn't be much to say about any children, uh, you know, especially at this age of their lives. But uh, that's what we get for George and uh, for my viewer. We'll put these back and we'll move right on to the next one, who is Charlotte. So Charlotte, we'll just do six cards on each of them. And Louis, I can't imagine what will come from him, but Charlotte, 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 what can the cards tell us about Charlotte? And we get the Ten of Cups fell out of the pack, which is Happy Family. Okay? And that is all these children should be concerned about right now, as a matter of fact. So, Charlotte, what can the cards just tell us about Charlotte? I don't want to put a heavy burden on that uh, energy. I just want to uh, tap into the universe. And what can the cards tell us about Charlotte's future? Okay? Six cards for that. Okay, one two, three, four, five, and six. What can the cards tell us about Charlotte? Charlotte. Six cards, signifier, right off the top, Charlotte. Okay, so the world card. This is the complete of a cycle. Um, you know, right away what comes to mind is that uh, her uh, uh, future is uh, complete as far as the monarchy is concerned. It's not going to go there. Her, her future is a full, rounded uh, future uh, that, um, that you know, isn't uh, bringing plans uh, for the monarchy uh, into it, really, as far as her leading the monarchy. But she is standing uh, on top of uh, this tiny little egg, okay, which uh, is fragile. So the plans don't include it. But it is fra it can be fragile. The um, challenge to that is the Pope or the Hierophant. So the challenge to to uh, her complete um, cycle here, which doesn't include the monarchy, is the Hierophant, which is the government. So could there be some? I mean, if something happens to her family and she somehow finds herself um, having to take on the monarchy, it, does the government have to make that decision? Is that what happens? I'm not sure. Or do they have to uh, affirm the decision? Uh, you Brits can probably tell me better about that. But for whatever reason, the challenge to this uh, world card, this completion of the cycle, is this Pope, uh, which is the rules by which a thing is lived. Now, it can be government. It can be a religious structure. It can be the structure in your family. And maybe this just reaffirms that, that you know, her cycle uh, isn't included in that structure. But it could be that the structure invades her, her cycle. Um, okay, so the base of this reading is the Nine of Swords. And this is, uh, swords are truth, uh, justice, rules, and law. And the Nine of Swords is typically nightmares. And to see this young woman crying at the base of a ladder to go up, uh, a dangerous ladder uh, where the steps are swords, makes me wonder um, if, uh, you know, that could be in the future for her. In the past of this reading, the magician is uh, telling us that, uh, well, you know, everything is there to make a thing happen if it needs to. The magician has all the tools available to them to get a thing done. So it may be that uh, if that were the case, she certainly will have all the tools that she needs to make it happen. And the sky of this reading is the hermit. And this is, uh, the hermit is, uh, you know, really shining a light before you take a step forward to make sure what's everything's clear around you. But we can see in this hermit, the light is just shining just around the hermit, not too far into the future. So, interesting. 
And then the final outcome for Charlotte, just what the cards can tell us, is the Seven of Wands. Wands are actions, forward movement, planning. And uh, this Seven of Wands is fending off uh, some of these um, not very happy um, wands coming up against it. And you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of, and this is just in my crazy mind, but I, I want to say maybe it came from the uh, inspiration of the cards. But this makes me think of if something happened to where she was uh, being considered uh, for that top job, um, there might be lots of obstacles uh, that come up that have to be defended. Huh. So that's interesting. So I think this doesn't close the book on Charlotte having that job, uh, but it, it, it certainly doesn't confirm it. Um, it, it more addresses a big maybe. Okay, so now we'll do six cards for Louis. Six cards for Prince Louis, who's just a baby. I mean, the other two are, are really babies, but this guy is really just a little, a little innocent little uh, being. So, Louis, Louis, let's see what the cards have to say about you, Prince Louis. Six cards, just to see what the cards can tell us about Prince Louis. Okay? Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Prince Louis, what can the cards tell us about Prince Louis? Signifier card being, well, look, it is the end of a cycle, okay? This is the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is typically depicted by a body on the ground with ten swords in its back. This trick, like I just said, you know, this is a repeated card from George's reading, I believe it was. This trick tells us that um, something has, has to end. Something is coming to, some cycle is coming to an end. The challenge to that, then, is this, uh, what is this card? It's the number ten. It's the entrance. What the heck is this card? I've got to look it up. Um, yeah, the 10 of the Major Arcana. Let's get in the book and quickly see what number 10 is. Uh, is it going to be towards the back? It looks like it is. So let's see. Um, Major Arcana, that's ones. This is two Major Arcana, Minor Arcana. Okay, 10. Thank you for being patient. Wheel of Fortune. Really? I wouldn't uh, take that for the Wheel of Fortune. Huh. But it is. Um, well, I'm unsettled about that. Well, so the Wheel of Fortune uh, typically is telling us that, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a crapshoot, really. And um, this 10... Um, this uh, little boy and his mother look like they're being blocked from entry. Wheel of Fortune. So something comes to an end, and the Wheel of Fortune is a challenge to that. The base of this reading, then, with this Three of Wands, Three of Wands are long-term planning. Wands are action, forward movement, and plans. And so, yeah, I guess, I don't know what this could refer to, long-term planning, other than, you know, he's the extra. You know, he's the extra, extra. Um, the past of this reading with the Queen of Wands is... Um, you know, this has to be uh, his mother. Um, the, Queen of, uh, the Queen of Wands is, is absolutely in charge of her plans, in charge of her future. And um, this is very interesting. The sky in this reading with this Two of Cups is the... Um, this card is really bothering me. This Two of Cups is really just telling us uh, that uh, there's lovers involved here. There's partnerships. There's a, a meaningful, passionate, emotional uh, communication uh, um, up in the sky for this. And then the likely outcome here is secrets being revealed, the moon card. You know, I just kind of feel like this little fella is too young to have um, this kind of a reading. But I'm going to go back over these cards again and just tell you what they mean. And it's so funny that this 10... Uh, the major, oh, is this the Ten of Pentacles? Is that, let me turn my light on here. Is this the Ten of Pentacles? I think it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is the Ten of Pentacles. Now, that makes it a little easier. I'm sorry for the confusion, but you know, I use different cards every day, and so that's what happens. I'm glad you're sticking with me. So, we got two tens here. The signified card being this Ten of Swords, meaning the complete end of something. Um, 
Okay, it's the end of a cycle. Um, the challenge to that end of the cycle is this Ten of Pentacles, which the Ten of Pentacles is generational wealth. Okay, generational wealth. Ten of Pentacles is, um, uh, or value. Pentacles are not only money, they're also value. So the end of the cycle is challenged by this generational value. And the base of this reading, being this Three of Wands, is long-term planning into the future. And we see the Three of Wands here represented by one wand that is definitely buried in the ground, and then two stakes right here, which can be used uh, to reposition if they need to. Ah, Three of Wands. I wonder if something may happen. Oh, that's interesting. And then the past of this reading, I'm thinking of these Three of Wands as, as if the three kids, where George is in the back, and the other two kids, Charlotte is a little bit taller, and Louis uh, is this last one. And then the um, past this reading of the Queen of Wands, this is mom with all the value, keeping those kids prepared and healthy for what they may need to face. And the sky this reading is the Two of Cups. This is a partnership. This is a compassion. This is passionate. And the outcome of this reading is this uh, moon card, which secrets being revealed. I just don't think this is a clear reading for Louis. I think he's just too young. And, uh, and this is too far ahead to make a clear determination. So I have to leave this up to you, viewers. You need to tell me what you think about these cards because they're not clear to me. Well, that's very interesting. I don't know. Tell me what you think. I just read the cards. I tell you what they say when I lay them down and use the interpretations that I've got uh, in my uh, pea brain. So let me know what you think. A lot of you are so intuitive and I really enjoy your comments. So I'm, I'm anxious to hear what you have to think about that. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.